Mitchell. Good afternoon. Welcome to the November 16, 2023 meeting of the Board of Directors of the Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency Board. Would the clerk please call the roll to yes. establish a quorum? Thank you. Directors McCarthy Olmstead. Director Frost. Here. Director Hume. Here. Chairman Kennedy. Here. Director Cerna. Here. Director Jennings. Here. Director Kaplan. Here. Director Talamantes. Director Holloway. Present. Director Shaw. Here. Director Barandas. Barandas here. Thank you. Director Reeder. Here. And we do have our quorum with one, two, three, four. Thank you very much. Does the clerk have a message? I do, sir. Thank you. This meeting of the Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency, <clears throat> pardon me, is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.saccounty.gov. Today's meeting replays Saturday, November 18th at 4.30 p.m. on Channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com backslash metrocable14. Members of the public who wish to address the board should fill out a speaker form located in the back of the room on the lectern and bring it up to me. When addressing the board, please identify yourself for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you very much. Would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, we will take public comments for items not on the agenda. Uh, I don't have any cards. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the board at this time on an item not on the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, then we will move on. Uh, we will now recess into closed session. Call back to order this member of the Board of Directors of the Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency. Would the clerk please call the roll to establish a quorum? Yes, sir. Directors McCarthy Olmstead. Here. Frost. Here. Di I'm sorry, Director Frost. Uh, Director Hume. Here. Di Chairman Kennedy. Here. Director Cerna. Here. Director Jennings. Here. Director Kaplan. Here. S Director Talamantes. Director Holloway. Here. Director Shaw. Here. Director Barandas. Barandas here. Barandas, thank you. Director Reeder. Here. And we do have our quorum. Thank you very much. And with that, we will uh, move on to, first of all, is there a report out, Council? There is, yes. Thank you. Uh, the board gave direction to staff on several of the items, the terms of which will be made available to the public uh, when agreed upon by the parties and reduced to writing. Thank you very much. With that, we will move on to consent items. We have items one through eight. Is there any member of the board that has any questions on an item on consent, would like to poll, or has questions? I'll move the consent calendar. Okay, we have a uh, motion by the vice chair, second by, I believe that was Director Shaw? Yes. Okay, and uh, is there a member of the public that would like to address the board on any, member, uh, on any item that is on consent, item one through eight? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, I guess we can just go voice vote now. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Consent passes. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move because of the fear of losing a quorum. We're going to reorder things a little bit here and take items 9 and 10 after the other separate items. So, Madam Clerk, we will move on to item number 11. Yes, sir. So item number 11 is a public hearing resolution of necessity number 2023-126, continued from the September 21st, 2020, eh, 2023 Board of Directors meeting um, regarding Sacramento County APN numbers, portions of 201-0320-018 and 201-0320-019. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. I'm Matt DeGroat, I'm real estate program manager. For Safeco. At this time, staff uh, recommends that this item, item be continued to the January 18th board meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion, a second to continue. Any comments from the board? 
Hearing and seeing none, is there any member of the public that would like to address the board at this time on this item? I do have a card with Mr. Manning. Uh, would you like to just forego this since we're continuing? Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, then, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Next item, please. So for item number 12, we have the public hearing resolution of necessity number 2023-127, continued from the October 19th, 2023 Board of Directors meeting regarding um, Sutter County APN, or portions of Sutter County APN 35-170-079. Mr. DeGroote. Good afternoon again, Board of Directors. Matt DeGroote, Real Estate Program Manager of SAFCO. For this item, staff also recommends that it be continued to the January 18th board meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Director Cerna, second by Director Jennings. Is there any member of the, of the board that has any questions at this time? Seeing none, is there any member of the, of the public that has a question at this time? Again, Mr. Manning, you uh, have a card in. Would you like to just continue to the next meeting or when we hear this? I'll, I'll uh, continue. Thank you, sir. Uh, then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Next item, please. Item number 13 is public hearing uh, resolution of necessity number 2023-128, continued from the October 19th, 2023 Board of Directors meeting regarding uh, portions of Sutter County APN number, or APN 35-170-080. I'm, I'm sorry, um, I, I made a mistake here. There was one member of the public that did have on number 12, but since it was continued, I assume you're okay with, okay, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mr. DeGroote. Good afternoon, uh, directors. Matt DeGroote, Real Estate Program Manager of Safeco. So, uh, to read into the record for this, this is for resolution of necessity number 2023-128, authorizing an eminent domain action to condemn real um, property interests for the REACH F component of Phase 4B of the Natomas Levy Improvement Project. Fee interest, permanent electrical and communication facilities easement, temporary construction easement over portions of Sutter County Assessor's Parcel, the, the aforementioned Assessor Parcel number, um, located at, sorry, 7495 Natomas Road, and the property owner is Homeward Bound Golden Retriever Rescue and Sanctuary, Inc. The property is located on the land side of the Natomas East Main Drainage Canal, West Levy, in the Natomas Basin area of Sutter County, California. Acquisition of the property is required for the NIMDEC West Levy Reach F component of Phase 4B of the project. Here we have a map showing the reaches of the Natomas project, and we are in Reach F here. Attachment B is a cross-section sketch showing the levy improvements of the property at this location, which include flattening the land side of the levy slope, construction of a seepage and stability berm, construction of an operation and maintenance road on the land side toe of the levy, and relocation of conflicting utility infrastructures and the establishment of a flood control works protection zone. Attachment C shows where this uh, property is located um, within the, the project reach. Here we have attachment D1, um, which shows the fee acquisition area and the easement acquisition line. The fee acquisition area is the um, brown dashed line and the easement acquisition area is the, uh, the, the yellow dashed line adjacent to it. Here's attachment D2, which shows the proposed acquisition for the temporary construction easement. And here we have a composite exhibit, since those other exhibits are a little bit hard to see. This is the one that shows how they all come together on top of the property. So we have the proposed fee in red, the proposed utility easement in orange, and then there's the temporary construction easement in blue. The fee interest um, is necessary to construct the levy improvements to ensure that no encroachments or excavations undermine the integrity of the levy improvements and allow for the proper operation and maintenance of the flood control features to take place. The permanent electrical and communication facilities easement is needed to re relocate existing utilities out of the levy improvement footprint. And the temporary construction easement is required for the installation of fencing and driveway improvements. 
Attachment ED3 of the staff report is the project description and necessity for the acquisitions, the environmental compliance documents and considerations in selecting mitigation sites and additional design that took place. On March 7th of 2022, SAFCA sent a letter to the prior property owners advising them that um, the upcoming levy improvements will affect their property. On June 1st of 2023, SAFCA sent a letter to the current property owners advising them that um, SAFCA was preparing an appraisal to acquire portions of the property and fee and as well as the electrical uh, communication facility easement and the temporary construction easement. On August 7th of 2023, SAFCA did provide a formal offer to purchase the property rights that were mentioned before. On September 29th of 2023, SAFCA mailed a written notice to the owners advising them that this board would um, consider a resolution of necessity on, at the October 19th meeting. On October 11th, uh, we did receive from the owners that they intended to appear and speak at that meeting, and that is attachment J to the staff report. At the October 19th board meeting, the board, this board opened up uh, the hearing for a resolution of necessity, received testimony from the owner, and, can, and then continued the hearing to this meeting today at this time. And that was to allow for additional negotiations to take place. So attachment K is a diary of the discussions between SAFCA's right-of-way consultant and the owners in which they discuss the potential effects of the project and the requirements um, and the right-of-way process and the requirements that are needed for the project. On October 27th of 2023, SAFCA did mail a written notice to the owner advising them that the board would hold a hearing today at this time to consider the adoption of a resolution of necessity to acquire the rights by eminent domain. So some additional communications that have taken place. Um, on October 9th, SAFCA did meet with the owner's representatives on site to discuss the project impacts to the property and the potential construction timing. SAFCA and the owner's representatives also discussed the issues that were raised by the owner at that board meeting on October 19th. At that meeting, SAFCA did provide uh, numerous hard copies that were subject of all the owner's comments at that meeting. And it was attachments one through nine. You can see them listed up there. I don't, for the sake of time, I won't read through them all, but appreciate that. those were handed out at that meeting. SAFCA and the owner's representatives at this meeting also agreed that SAFCA would conduct uh, a topographic survey of the property to investigate how the project may be able to correct existing drainage issues. So that will take place. And then on November 13th, SAFCA sent a letter to the owners responding to them in written, written comments, uh, comments of all those items that were discussed at the meeting and the comments that the owner made at the October 19th board meeting. And here we have just the exhibits that are attached to this resolution of the different proposed acquisitions. And for this, um, staff will, of course, continue to negotiate you know, as long as we can. But the project timeline, we're at a point now where it dictates that we need to ensure um, a path forward. So for that reason, we are here requesting this resolution so we can continue to move forward, even though we will continue to negotiate with the owners. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, at this point, before we take a um, entertain a motion, is there any questions of staff? Uh, I mean, at, at this time from the board, then I will open up the public hearing. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the board on this item? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I'll uh, go ahead and move the resolution of necessity uh, with also the express direction to uh, postpone the filing of the RON for a duration of one month. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Did the clerk get the motion, the maker and the motion and second? It was the vice chair seconded. No, Mr. Holloway. Well, you're you're pinch hitting. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your work. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Next item, please. 
So item number 14 is uh, public hearing res resolution of necessity number 2023-129 regarding portions of Sacramento County APN 201-0200-017 and 201-0200-022. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, directors. Matt Road again, real estate program manager of SAFCA. Um, so reading into the record again. This, uh, this action is to authorize an eminent domain action to condemn certain real property rights um, for reach D component phase 4B of the Natomas Levy Improvement Project. Fee interest, um, permanent electrical communications, facilities easement, temporary construction easement um, over for APN 201-0200-017 and 201-0200-022. This is located at 6615 East Levy Road. And the property owner is the San Roque Acuna successor trustee and the Kenneth and Mary Lou Kaoka family, 1983 Evocable Trust, established in April 29th of 1983. So th this presentation is covering two separate um, acquisitions by the, owned by the same uh, property, so, property owner. So we are combining them in this one presentation. So it'll be a little bit different. And you'll see the, uh, it's a little bit longer, but we'll try to move through it quickly. So the second property um, is, is, yeah. We are up against the clock because of losing, a, but do not rush through. Um, we have plenty of time. Okay. Okay, thank you. So the second property here is for resolution of necessity number 2023-130, and it is, auth again, authorizing a domain action to condemn certain real property interests for reach D component of phase four of the Natomas Levy Improvement Project, a fee interest, a permanent electoral communication facilities easement, a temporary construction easement, and this is over Sacramento County Assessor's Parcel Number 201-0200-023, located at 7001 East Levy Road, owned by the same property owner. Both these properties um, are located on the land side of the Natomas East Main Drainage Canal, West Levy, in the Natomas Basin area of Sacramento County, California. Acquisition of the property is required for the wet Natomic, or the NIMDEC West Levy Reach G component of phase four B of the project. So we're in, here is the uh, attachment A, which shows the Thomas Levy improvement reaches, and we are in reach G. Here we have attachment B1 um, to resolu resolution necessity number 2023-129, and this is a cross-section sketch showing levy improvements at APN 201-0200-017, which include widening of the top of the levee and flattening of the landside levee slope, construction of a seepage and stability berm, construction of an operation and maintenance road at the landside toe of the levee, relocation of conflicting utility infrastructure, and the establishment of a flood control works protection zone. As part of the same um, resolution, here's attachment B2, and this is a cross-section sketch showing the levy improvements at APN 201-0200-022 at the same address, and this includes widening of the top of the levy and flattening of the landside levy slope, construction of an operation and maintenance road at the landside toe of the levy, relocation of conflicting uh, utility infrastructure, and the establishment of a flood protection work zone. This here is a, this is attachment B1 to um, resolution 2023-130. This is the second resolution. This is a cross-section levy, cross-section sketch showing the levy improvements at APN 201-0200-023, located at 7001 East Levy Road. And these improvements include widening of the top of the levy and the flattening of the landside levy slope, construction of a seepage and stability berm, construction of an operation and maintenance road at the land side toe of the levee, and the relocation of conflicting utility infrastructure and the establishment of a flood protection work zone. Attachment C shows where um, both of the properties for both of these resolutions are located within the reach. Okay, we're gonna go through, there's uh, several exhibits here for all of the various actions taking place here. So here's attachment D1 to staff report 2023-129. Uh, 
This shows the fee acquisition area and the easement acquisition area for this proposed acquisition. Fee acquisition is in brown and the easement acquisition area is in yellow, hash line. Attachment D2 to the same um, resolution shows the temporary, proposed temporary construction easement. And again, um, so this is all for APN 201-0200-017. There are two APNs for this resolution. And this shows how all these rights come together. There, on the screen, there's a proposed fee acquisition, the proposed utility, and the temporary construction easement. The fee acquisition, uh, the fee interest is needed to construct the levy improvements to ensure that no encroachments or excavations undermine the integrity of the levy improvements and allow for the proper operation and maintenance of the flood control features to take place. The permanent electrical and communication facilities easement is needed to relocate the existing utilities out of the levy footprint, levy improvement footprint. And the temporary construction easement is required for the installation of fencing and driveway improvements. Okay, so that was for the first APN for this. Here is for the second APN for this um, resolution. This is for APN 201-0 200-022. This is attachment D4. And this shows again the fee acquisition line and the easement acquisition line. Attachment D5 to the same APN shows the temporary construction easement, I propose temporary construction easement acquisition. And again, for this same APN on this same resolution, this is the composite exhibit that shows how they all come together and they are required for the same reasons that the other, um, that I read for the other ones are. Okay, so here we move on to um, resolution 2023-130. This is the third APN that I own by this family. So here on this exhibit, this is D1 to that staff report, and we see it shows the fee acquisition area the, and the easement acquisition area. The fee is shown in brown again, and the, ease, and the easement acquisition area is in yellow. So here we have attachment D2 to this staff report. And I should note that in the staff report that you may have all seen prior to this, it had an incorrect exhibit, which was actually the exhibit for the, um, the easement acquisition. So it's been replaced, and you should have that in front of you. It, it, this exhibit D2 to this staff report is for, shows the temporary construction easement. <clears throat> and again, here we have the composite um, exhibit showing how it all comes together. We have the proposed fee acquisition, the proposed um, utility easement acquisition, and the temporary construction easement. And once again, all of these acquisitions are required for the same reasons stated before. So here we have attachment uh, E to E3 of the staff report, which uh, does the project description and necessity for the acquisitions, the environmental compliance documents, and considerations in selecting mitigation sites, and additional design um, analysis that took place. On March 7th of 2022, SAFCA sent a letter to the property owners advising them that this upcoming levy improvement project will affect their property. And again, here's where the attachments kind of split for both of the different um, resolutions. So uh, for the attachments listed on the screen um, for both of the actions, on June 20th of 2022, SAFCA sent letters to the property owners advising them that SAFCA was preparing Appraisals to acquire the portions of, the prop of their property and fee, um, as well as a permanent electrical and communication facilities easement. So again, attachment I to staff report 2023129 and attachment H to staff report 2023-130 are the formal offers that were sent out on October 5th of 2022 to purchase the aforementioned property rights. Attachment J to the staff report to the staff report for 2023129 and attachment I to the staff report for 2023130 um, on May 9th and September 20th of 2023, SAFCA sent letters to the owners that clarified the initial offers and described the temporary rights that were required as a temporary construction easement and set a value for those rights. 
So for the attachments, again, shown on the screen, um, it is the diaries of discussions between the right-of-way agent, Safeco's right-of-way acquisition agent uh, consultant, and the owners, during which they discussed all the potential effects of the pro project on the property and the requirement that the property is needed and the associated right-of-way process. On October 27th of 2023, Safeco did mail written notice to the owners advising them that the board, that this board would hold a meeting um, today at this time to consider the adoption of a resolution of necessity. Additional communications that took place. Um, so on October 20th of 2023, Safeco staff did send an inquiry to the owner's council asking if the owners of the property and their council would like to meet to discuss the acquisition of the property. This inquiry was, and all their requests to meet have not been accepted at this time by the owners. On November 13th of 2023, after the staff report um, was posted, the clerk of the board received a notice from the owner's council advising they intend to appear today at this board meeting uh, to speak. And the notice also provided written objections to the adoption of this resolution. So here we have an exhibit that shows an exhibit that just shows uh, what attachments are going to be to the proposed resolutions. This is for resolution 2023-129. And another set of exhibits to that resolution, to the other resolution 2023-130. So again, as always, uh, staff will continue to work uh, with to reach a negotiated settlement with this property owner. At this time, we just we have not been able to receive um, much communication. I haven't received a counteroffer. And in order to preserve the project timeline and, uh, and continue on the path forward, it's for that reason that we're requesting that this adoption uh, be considered, uh, this resolution by the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grove. Uh, if, if the, does the board have any questions at this time? We're considering two separate RONs at the same time. Um, so if you do have questions or comments, would you please identify which one that you're addressing or both? Anything from the board? Okay, hearing none, then I will open up the public hearing. Is there any member of the public? I have Mr. Manning signed up for both 14 and 15. And being that there are two separate yet connected items. Uh, you have three minutes on each one. Okay, th I, have, I have some handouts. That's I don't know if I have enough, so. Just give them to the clerk. With all the billable hours you're putting in today, I would expect that you'd be able to afford more <laughs> copies, but okay. Well, I try to keep the cost down for the clients. <laughs> <laughs> My time's already going. So I, I want to um, start off by saying that I'm, I'm not here to stop the project. Um, I, it's a wonderful, absolutely necessary project, and it's critical that we have flood protection, obviously, and I don't know if the public understands just how critical it is in the Natomas Basin. Um, and I will say that staff has been cooperative. I enjoy my working relationship with them. What I'm here today, particularly, uh, I think it's quite apropos that the Cayuca matter is up. So what I've handed out is a map, or a, a Google Earth aerial image. And if you look at the aerial image, you can see that there's the uh, Natomas East Main Drain Pump Station. And just to the south of the pump station is the Cayuca Home property. They own the property that's just to the south of it. That property has already been the subject of an acquisition. And there's a final order of condemnation. It's over. It's done. And that property, the bounds of the take, so if I, everybody's kind of getting it right now, the bounds of the take on that property that is on the right-hand side of the page, there's a house there on the right-hand side, and then you have, like, this open field. Yeah. Um, Let me, oh. can't stop the clock, but you can keep it. Well, I've got I, another three like somewhere. So here you go. May I approach? I like that. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, over here on the on the this is the oops, this is the pump station. This is the 
let's call it the uh, start of reach, whatever, G. This is the Kyoka home property right here. This is where uh, Kenny Kyoka lives. Can I interrupt? Yes. Through the chair. Um, I believe, uh, Mr. Manning, you said the property is due south of the pump station. It's not, it's due west. Well, north is actually up. Right. It, if, it was, if it was due south, it'd be in the channel. M Mr. Manning, do not challenge Supervisor Cerna <laughs> on <to> such things. <laughs> okay. Um, so, wherever, whichever direction it is, it is below the pump station or adjacent to the pump station, whatever you want to say it is. So, that is owned by the Coyote. That property, that dirt road, that's the maintenance road that's for this project. There was no taking of that property where the, the field is. It was a 15-foot temporary construction easement or, uh, or easement for uh, electrical transmission that was taken. There was not a flood prote protection works zone at that property. You go immediately, take one foot over. It's like we're in a new state because all of a sudden, the project somehow needs a flood prote protection work zone. Nobody has ever explained to me, the property owners, or the public what the difference is. It's literally the same project. It's literally to provide the same level of flood, flood protection. But on all these properties, as we go up the Natomas East Main Drain, that requires apparently, a flood protection work zone. And that's what our main objection is. Taking property for this project that is required, you have an absolute right and uh, obligation to do as, as you know, the flood protection agency that you are. And I've never said otherwise. What I will say is that taking property from private owners is a tremendous power. And the only time it can be done is when it is absolutely required. And I don't understand how it cannot, it's not required right here on the same owner's property, Kenny Kyoka, and how it can be required up here. It, it doesn't make sense. And that's the biggest issue that we have. I'm not here to talk about money. We can work through money. But money doesn't allow somebody to keep their property. People, property isn't just money. Property is a guaranteed constitutional fundamental right. And that's what we're here to protect. So I, that's why I'm here to object. Now I have submitted a, a, a letter that has much more in it and I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. But that's really the point that I wanted to make and this also goes for um, the, uh, the Krumenacher matter, which is next. So it's kind of a global thing. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody had. Thank you very much, Mr. Cerna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, the, you mentioned uh, you've submitted a letter, Mr. Manning. Did, did that, was that submitted today? No, it was submitted on Monday. On Monday. So prior to Monday, um, was this issue or the difference of opinion ever expressed through you as the representatives for the Cuyahoga Trust? It's been expressed up and down for many, many months, yes. Uh, okay, so what I'm trying to reconcile, and perhaps others on this board are doing the same, is you heard in the uh, narrative of um, the various attachments and timelines associated with uh, this particular set of RONs that they're, according to staff, and please correct me if I'm wrong, there was limited if no communication um, with the property owner. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to figure out here is you're communicating a fairly specific potential grievance associated with this action, but the most, uh, the earliest we knew about it, we meaning the agency through staff, is Monday. So I, why is that? If it's well, so concerning, why was it just Monday that... I heard, I heard Mr. DeGroote say that uh, 
We didn't provide a counteroffer. We haven't provided a counteroffer because I don't think you have the right to take that property. Okay. So that's but the limit. But I can, I can say that uh, this issue of expanding the take has been discussed for, I don't know, six months, and I've got email communications. Now, it's not necessarily <clears throat> with Mr. DeGroote. It's, it's all SAFCA staff. So that, okay. that's my all point. Right, sit there. So uh, let me turn to staff then. And, and, um, and Rick, I don't know if you want to take this, but uh, can you help a board member here understand uh, why this seems to be kind of an 11th hour, at least from my perspective, an 11th hour issue that has been communicated by a property owner's representative? Um, yeah, no, thank you. So just for the board, just to make, make it clear, the property, the design of the project south of, of there has a slurry wall in it. It's west, right? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it is the property to the right on the image. <laughs> it's the property, but the, the levee to this, the levee going north and south, yes. the levee south of the pumping plant, that reach was designed with the slurry wall in it. Right. The reach above it doesn't, so the core wants, because there's no slurry cutoff, we need to ensure that the seepage path is extended. And um, maybe we haven't been, or maybe our explanations haven't been, um, Understood or a adequate enough, but but we have we've ha we've tried to express the difference. So in was the that past. was that expressed in writing? Um, did, have we help me out on that one, Jeremy? Sure. Yeah, and just to confirm, I I certainly have had conversations with Mr. Manning as well. John Bassett and I have met with him several times <clears throat> on various pro um, parcels throughout this area. The specific characterization as between these two parcels, I hadn't heard before. We've definitely heard the objection to the amount of take. That is not new. And John and I have tried to explain uh, the, the project need for that. Um, Basically, the, the explanation that uh, Mr. Johnson just gave us, it, the, the slurry wall ending and the fact that you, you, gotta, you have to have seepage containment, which probably has a, from an engineering perspective, a, a big, uh, greater width of that levy at that point, correct? I think John yeah. wants to, you want to that. clarify that. John? Yes, Mr. Manning raised this issue at two prior uh, Ron hearings, one with Odysseus Farms and one with Ale uh, Property Holding uh, about three months ago uh, where the board adopted those Rons. But he raised this issue and raised the issue with the Flood Control Works Protection Zone. And at that time, we explained that this area of Reach H has a cutoff wall. It doesn't need the footprint uh, of the reach F and G area or the reach E area. Um, so that was explained earlier uh, by Mr. or to Mr. Manning during those hearings. Okay, that's, thank you, because that's what I wanted to know was whether or not we took the time to explain why um, his client has seen a difference between, through his example here, between the property to the right and the property to the left. So I'm good, thank you. My understanding was that there was a difference in design. That was all. We had the design requirement, or the, the rights required. We can all go back and look at it. That's the first time I'm hearing about a seepage path being extended. Um, I wasn't here for those two, but maybe I missed it. Um, but you know, I, I don't. That's that's the first time hearing of that, and um, it still doesn't uh, sit well that. All of a sudden, there's there's this change. But if that's the statement, then that's the statement. Thank you, Mr. Manning. And uh, regardless of what happens here today, you'll have op ample opportunity to have those discussions. Yeah, and, and like I said, we're not. I'm not. We'll we'll work through the understood uh, compensation issues. But that uh, was the main point. Understood. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions of Mr. Manning? No. Is there any other member of the public that would like to address the board at this time? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and uh, move staff, staff recommendation. For 14 and, and 15? 15, yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Next item, please. Item number 16 is, 
sorry, let me turn the page here. Uh, public hearing resolution of necessity number 2023-131 regarding portions of Sacramento County APN 201-0320-025. Good afternoon again, directors. Matt Trigot, Real Estate Program Manager with SAFCA. So this, for this resolution, um, again, reading into the record, this is authorizing an eminent domain action to condemn certain real property interests for the REACH-G component of Phase 4B of the Natomas Levy Improvement Project, a fee interest, an access drainage, public roadway, and public utilities permanent easement, a temporary construction easement over... Um, portions of Sacramento County Assessor Parcel Number 201-0320-025. This is located at 6301 East Levy Road in Rio Linda, California. And the property owner is Alice Krumenacher, trustee of the Alice Krumenacher Trust dated February 18th, 2005. And Mary Krumenacher, um, trustee of the Mary Krumenacher Trust dated August 27th of 2004. So this property is located on the land side of the Natomas East Main Drainage Canal, West Levy, in the Natomas Basin area of Sacramento County, California. And acquisition of the property is required for the NIMDEC West Levy Reach G component of Phase 4B of the project. Again, here is the exhibit that shows the Natomas uh, Levy in, uh, the project reaches, and we are in Reach G again. Attachment B is a cross-section sketch showing the levee improvements at this location, um, which include widening the top of the levee and flattening the land side levee slope, construction of a seepage stability berm, construction of an operation and maintenance road at the land side toe of the levee, relocation of conflicting utility infrastructure, and the establishment of a flood protection works protection zone. Attachment C shows where this property is located and within the project reach. Here we have attachment D1, um, which shows the fee, the proposed fee acquisition area and the proposed easement acquisition area. Fee acquisition area is shown in the brown um, hash line and the proposed easement is in the yellow hash line. Attachment D2 um, shows the proposed temporary construction easement acquisition. And again, here is a composite exhibit showing how all those come together um, over the property. So you can see the proposed fee acquisition in red, proposed easement, permanent easement acquisition in orange, and the proposed temporary construction easement in blue. The fee interest is needed to construct the levy improvements to ensure that no encroachments or excavations undermine the integrity of the levy improvements and allow for the proper operation and maintenance of the flood control features to take place. The permanent access drainage public roadway and public utilities easement is needed to relocate existing access drainage public road and public utilities out of the levy improvement footprint. And the temporary construction easement is required for the installation of fencing and driveway improvements. Attachments E3 3 of the staff report are the project description and necessity for the acquisition environmental compliance documents and considerations in selecting mitigation sites and additional design analysis that was taking place. On March 7th of 2022, SAFCA sent a letter to the property owners advising them that the upcoming levy improvements um, project will affect their property. On March 31st of 2022, SAFCA sent a letter to the property owners advising them that an appraisal was being prepared to acquire a portion of the property in fee, as well as the um, access, drainage, public roadway, and public utilities permanent easement. On September 27th of 2022, SAFCA did provide a formal offer to purchase the property rights, which consisted of the rights previously mentioned, which also included temporary rights required for the installation of fencing and driveway. On April 11th of 2023, SAFCA sent a letter to the owner that clarified the initial offer and described those temporary rights as a temporary construction easement and set a value for those rights. On September 29th of 2023, SAFCA mailed a written notice to the owners um, advising them that this board would hold a hearing at the October 19th meeting to consider the adoption of a resolution of necessity. On October 7th of 2023, SAFCA did mail a written notice to the owners rescinding that notice 
um, of a hearing sent on September 29th and informed the owners that if it became necessary, a new notice would be issued. Attachment L uh, to the staff report is the diary of discussions between Safeco's right-of-way acquisition consultant and the owners during which they discussed the potential effects of the project on the property, the requirements um, that, that those rights are required, and the right-of-way process that would take place. On October 27th of 2023, then Safeco did mail another written notice to the owners, advising them that the board would hold a hearing today at this time to consider the adoption of a resolution of necessity. Some additional communications. On October 20th of 2023, again, Safeco staff sent an inquiry to the owner's council asking if the owners of the property and their council would like to meet to discuss the acquisition of the property. And this inquiry and all other requests to meet um, have not been accepted by the owners. On November 13th of 2023, after the staff report was posted, the clerk of the board did receive a notice from the owner's council advising that they intend to appear today at this time um, to, object to, this, to, to object to this resolution and make comments. And the notice also provided written objections to the adoption of this resolution of necessity. So again, at this time, um, there has, hasn't been very much communication with the actual property owners. We have not received a counteroffer. And you know, the project timeline keeps moving forward. So. We're here to request the consideration of this resolution to allow us to continue to move forward um, you know, with the understanding that we will continue to negotiate with these property owners and their council. Thank you. Oh, also, here we go. This is a exhibit. Um, this exhibit shows what will be attached to resolution 2023-131. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. DeGroote. Is there any questions of staff at this time on the board? Hearing and seeing none, I will open up the public comment. I do have a card from Mr. Manning. I'll be very brief. I just want to uh, uh, assuage any concerns that uh, the directors may have. The reason why there hasn't been any communication is because uh, Alice Krumenacher has passed away. So that, that didn't want you to think it otherwise. And I still voice those same objections that I had in the uh, Cayuca uh, matter. And I look forward to going and reviewing that, the, the video of the hearings with the Lutzuk and um, uh, the other matter, because I was not there, but I look forward to seeing if the word seepage was used. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Is there any other member of the public that would like to address the board at this time on this item? Hearing seeing none, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. So moved to... Uh... Uh, adopt the resolution of necessity. Second. We have a motion by Director Cern, a second by Director Jennings. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. And before we move on back on the agenda to item number nine and 10, let me just say um, to the members of the public uh, and, and, and to our staff, uh, you got clear direction to uh, not do what is minimally expected of us, but to go above and beyond. And I thank you. Um, I think that staff, and that includes uh, Ms. Walco and, and her colleagues, um, are doing a exemplary job of actually, you know, being a good steward of the public responsibility. Mr. Chair, if I could. Yes, sir. Yeah, just, just, just before Mr. Manning in particular leaves the chambers, um, I want to just state for the record that uh, uh, none of us, myself included, take mm -hmm. um, the uh, adoption of resolutions of necessity lightly and completely agree with your earlier statement, sir, that um, it is part of a, a great responsibility and authority that we we have not just at this agency level, but uh, all of the various agencies that we uh, that we serve. So please don't think that we take joy in um, taking some of the actions that we just did. Um, also, as you pointed out, it's for a project that is absolutely required for anyone uh, visiting, living, working, and playing within the Tomas space, including your clients. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Stern. I think we all agree. Item number nine, please. So item number nine is the executive director's report. All right. 
Thank you. Can you bring that up on the... There we go. Great. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Rick Johnson, Executive Director. A couple of things. First of all, um, the federal fiscal year, as you know, began 1st of October. And at the time, Congress passed a continuing resolution that only took the funding through tomorrow. Um, earlier this week, the House passed uh, another continuing resolution, and the Senate uh, passed it yesterday. The president's expected to sign it. Um, basically extending our, the funding for our projects with uh, the core through January 19th. And so it gives us a, a little more time. Things will keep going um, on our core projects. So I wanted to make you aware of that. Did want to take, as we're buttoning up for the summer construction, uh, some of the staff had provided some pictures of some of the construction that has occurred this this year. On the American River, Common Features 2016, the Lower American River Bank Protection. Um, this is site 2-1, and I'll show you where that is in, in just a minute, but you can see this, this site pretty much being buttoned up um, and getting ready. It will be planted after this. Um, so 2-1 is just on the left bank, the downstream from the H Street Bridge and, and, and Sac State. And then the next site I'll show you is some work, Site 2-2, which is right basically on the um, right bank under Howe Avenue. And on this particular one, the picture up in the upper left, you can see the banks, how steep they were. So they were very uh, susceptible to erosion when we get the higher flows. And then the banks erode and go, go back in and take out the levee plus they take out the bike path and some of the vegetation. So what they did in this reach is they, you can see the different stages through the years, but they are through the year, but they constructed a um, hardened rock um, area there and flattened the slope and then flattened it back and then that, that will be planted there. So they'll make that slope a much more stable and less erosive, protecting the levee and the vegetation and the bike path and stuff. So the other next down two three is on the right side, uh, basically across from Sac State and going up underneath the H Street Bridge, and in this in this particular reach, um, what the core designed there were their um, groins that are put in uh, perpendicular to the flow, and they they put uh, several of them along there, and it, it prevents erosion from starting and and moving up and down the. Um, the bank there, so so that's just uh, again that that will be planted now that they've finished uh, the construction. Moving over to the Sacramento River uh, contract four here, this is actually being done um, from barges because the, the river is deep enough and it makes it much easier than having to haul through through property again. What you're seeing here is they're putting in the hardened bank and then a flattened slope will be covered and then planted. And where this is in particular in the pocket area, uh, the orange ones are the areas that were covered under um, contract two and those particular pictures were uh, the, the second uh, set of orange from the left there about where that's located on that bend. So jumping over to the Lower Elkhorn Basin Levee Setback Project, the uh, state of California um, has been building this one with help from SAFCA. It includes, um, let's see, uh, uh, there it goes. So it includes that the uh, setting back the levee along the Yolo Bypass from I-5 down to where the Sacramento Bypass comes in, and then setting back the levee on the Sacramento Bypass north side, which is also part of American River Common Features 2016. So a couple of pictures here on the bottom right shows the new setback levee along the um, Yolo Bypass, and then on the top left, you can see where the Yolo Bypass levee comes into the Sacramento uh, bypass and then SAFCA actually constructed the pumping plant and uh, moved the bright landfill. Again, this project just got completed and uh, there's still a little cleanup work to do, but but basically it, that one's done. So concurrent with that, the core is starting to build the widened weir um, as part of Common Features 2016. So you can see the um, 
levels project is right here that the state built, and then right down here circled in green, that part is the core will build, um, or is building right now to tie um, into the levels project over to the Sac River, and then right adjacent to that is where the new weir will be. So looking at this picture here, you can see the new setback levy that is, is um, pretty much up and, and, and ready for flood season there, um, on tying into the levels. And then you can see along there piles that are gonna serve as the weir foundation and just some more pictures of the piles going in along where the, the weir is. So if you ever get a chance to get out there, there's a lot of activity going on. And as part of the, um, it, the state of California to celebrate finishing the levels project, um, they, they held an event to also kick off the California Flood Preparedness Week um, in October. It had uh, Secretary of Natural Resources, Wade Crowfoot, um, Carla Namath from DWR, and Gary Lipner from uh, her, her deputy, and then Jane Dolan, president of the Central Valley Flood Protection Board, and then Lieutenant Colonel Arnett, who's acting at the Sacramento District, all, all spoke. So that was what I had. I did want to add one more thing. I do want to thank um, Lydia Frazier for helping us um, today. Appreciate very much. Um, Lindy's on jury duty, and Lydia was very, very helpful filling in. So thank you. So that's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any questions? And we are all very, very aware of Lydia's capabilities. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> item 10, please. So item number 10 is resolution number 2023-125, amending resolution number 2023-010 with regards to the SAFCA Board of Directors December 21st, 2023 meeting. Yes. All right. Thank you. So our, unfortunately, our, our December meeting is December 21st, which is the 30, Thursday before Christmas weekend. And right as of this moment, it doesn't appear like we're going to have a quorum. So we're, we're asking the board to consider, um, I put a resolution on your, um, uh, on the dais there to cancel it. And we, we would need to take an action because in February, the, the board adopted um, resolution 2023. 3-10, which set the time and location and date of all the board meetings. And so we would I'd request consideration of adopting resolution 2023-125 that would cancel the, the December board meeting. So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Director Jennings, a second by direct, Director Kaplan, and I'm assuming that this... Elena. Oh, was it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I assume that uh, this isn't going to back anything up as far as timelines. No, we any, uh, we had a few things that we needed to do. We, we put them on today's agenda, and then um, so it would push if we need any more RONs to January instead of December, but um, we're hopeful that we can get those resolved. So. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any member of the public that has any questions on this item? Hearing none and seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? We'll see you in January. Thank you. Okay. My grandchildren, thank you. I, <laughs> my future grandchildren, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if that's all that we have before us today, uh, I get you all out of here by your 4.30 deadline, so we are adjourned. Thank you, sir.